Hello everyone, my name is Igor and I'm going to talk about Pokemon. <laughs> Specifically my favorite Pokemon that is called Missing No with a dot at the end and this is what it looks like. So Pokemon has everything to do with programming and here's why. This is my day job. But first of all, what even is Pokemon? Pokemon is a super violent video game. It's a dystopia where humans capture animals, trap them in Pokeballs, and make them fight against each other for their own amusement. They do look super cute, though. Pokemon can only say their own name. One of the cutest and most popular Pokemon is probably Pikachu, uh, who has brought us Academy Award-winning lines such as Pikachu, Pika, and Pika-P, uh, all while electrifying its enemies. It also devolves into Raichu. <laughs> Um, so, the first generation of Pokemon came out 20 years ago, 20 years ago, um, and it ran on the Nintendo Game Girl console, which was my first computer, uh, and this is what it sounds like when you start the game. Let's see if I can actually... Patience. Patience, my friends. Let's see? Well... Can you hear that? So good, so good. Very well. Um, now, uh, at the beginning of the game, you need to choose between one of these three Pokemon, uh, Bizazam, Glumanda, and Shiggy. Um, and it's widely regarded that this is the most important decision of your life. Now, there's 151 different Pokemon in the first generation of the game. Um, but there's a spectacular glitch that allows you to encounter Pokemon that aren't actually part of the game, and it works like this. So, you go to the old man who explains how to catch Pokemon, and after the tutorial sequence, you fly to Cinnabar Island, um, and then you go swimming up and down the East Coast, uh, and soon enough, you will encounter Miss Singno. But how does it work? Like, how, how does this even? Well, I'm glad you asked, because you're literally not going to believe this. The Nintendo Game Girl is a computer. It has a CPU and memory. Um, not very much memory, only eight kilobytes. Uh, and because of these constraints, uh, the programmers of the game had to cut some edges uh, in order to get the results. So when you start this tutorial sequence, um, the name of the player, like the name that you select at the beginning of the game, is replaced with the string old man, which is in order to actually display old man right here. Um, and so for this, the actual name of the player needs to be backed up in some other like, place in memory that normally defines which Pokemon you can find in grass. That's, that's the place they chose to put it. And this data is not cleared, so when you finish the tutorial sequence, um, it, it just stays there. Uh, and this is known as the old man glitch. Um, so next you fly to Cinnabar Island, and Cinnabar Island has no grass tiles, which means that the name still stays in that location in memory. Uh, but there is a second bug known as the left-facing uh, shore tile glitch, which makes these east shore tiles behave as if they were grass. So you find the Pokemon in these tiles that you would normally find in grass. Um, however, because of the old man glitch, you don't have any, any data for the grass Pokemon, but instead you have the player's name that is then interpreted as the index numbers that are then used to actually define which Pokemon you can encounter. Um, which means, depending on the name that you picked at the beginning of the game, you will either get to see this missing no Pokemon or not. <laughs> so there's two different types of strange Pokemon that you can find. Um, one type is missing no, and the other one is M, or like quote M. Um, and on examining the dumped ROM of the game, um, 
you will find a table of Pokemon, like the table of all Pokemon that exist. Uh, and in this table, in addition to the 151 official Pokemon, there's in fact 39 uh, cleared entries, all of which have the name Missingno, which stands for missing number. So those used to be actual Pokemon, but they were then zeroed out and just replaced with, with, this, with, with these blank entries, essentially. Um, and so when you go surfing on Cinnabar Island, the player's name will actually index into this table and in some cases hit one of these forgotten entries and that's why you get to see missing now. Um, it gets a lot more interesting though if you index outside of the table because like the table is limited in size, right? But if, if you have certain characters in your name, you will get to index outside um, and you will get way more glitched Pokemon. Like you get the weirdest shit. Um, so there's this Pokemon called Quote M, um, which looks exactly like Missing No, but behaves very differently. And when you trade this M Pokemon to the Yellow Edition, it will transform into three trainer Poke Dollar, which is just the most awesome name. <laughs> now, th the best part about seeing this M Pokemon is it will overflow the table, and um, it will set the encounter bit in the memory area that is used to store the user's items. So uh, the result is that the item at the sixth location in your item bag will become, um, well, you'll basically get 128 copies of that item. So this can be used to duplicate a lot of rare items such as rare candies and master balls, which is very useful in the game. Um, and that's missing now. Now the second glitch I wanna show you is one called Glitch City. Um, so there's a special area in the Pokemon game called the Safari Zone. And upon entering this zone, a step counter starts. Uh, and after 500 steps, you get warped back to the entrance of the zone. Um, but uh, if you fly outside of the zone, the step counter still keeps on running. It isn't reset. So after 500 steps of walking around outside of the safari zone, um, it will try and warp you to the warp location four, but this warp location four, uh, well, for the safari zone, it's the location of the entrance, but this is contextual to every city. So if you're outside of the safari zone, it could be anything. And in many cities don't actually have a warp location four. So when attempting to warp out of a random city, it will just start executing some random code that will transform the current city into Glitch City, which looks like this. <laughs> and you can, you can actually walk around this city. Um, it, it looks kind of weird, but it has the same collision map as the original city that you were in. Um, but if you collide with anything, you will actually get stuck, so you can't move anymore. Uh, you can then pause the game, at which point everything around you will transform into water. Um, then you can start surfing around and you will find yourself outside of the playable map with no way to get back in. So the, the only escape at this point is to use a Pokemon with flying ability to fly back. And if you don't have one of those Pokemon, like just don't save the game. You don't wanna, you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna go there. Um, uh, and, and also, what I, found, what, what I found most profound is that there's just like random numbers lying around on the floor. Like this, this is amazing to me. This just, poof, this blew my mind. Um, also, in the yellow edition, you have this Pikachu that follows you around everywhere. Um, but in Glitch City, it will actually turn around and walk away. <laughs> okay. Uh, the third glitch is one that allows you to clone Pokemon. So the, the first generation of Pokemon was released in two editions, uh, red and blue, or red and green in, in the original Japanese versions. And, you know, they're mostly the same, um, but there's some Pokemon that you can only find in either one of them exclusively, which is just an elaborate plot to get you to buy more stuff from Nintendo. Um, but the, the outcome is that in order to catch them all, uh, you need to trade between the games. And you can do that um, by connecting to Game Girl consoles using a link cable. Um, 
This was my first distributed system, a two-node cluster. <laughs> so during the trading process, it's possible to disconnect the link cable, uh, which cancels the transaction. Um, but with good timing, it's possible to disconnect right after one side has acknowledged the transfer, whereas the other one hasn't. Um, and this way, you get to actually trade a Pokemon on one side, but not on the other one. Um, and this was my first network partition, and it resulted in losing rights. It's pretty sweet. Um, so this is an example of a fundamental problem in distributed consensus, the two generals problem. So you have two generals who want to attack a city, but they need to establish a time. And um, because, not, because neither side of the attackers knows whether an acknowledgement has been received by the other party, you have this infinite regress of acknowledgements where like dropping um, an acknowledgement, like you, you just don't know, like you don't know, you have no shared knowledge because it's just not possible. And so consensus can't be established. Okay, so I've showed you a few interesting glitches, but why should we care? Why should we care about these things? Uh, and what is the significance? And to me, the significance is gaming consoles are computers, and games are just computer programs, right? And computers are everywhere, and we depend on this technology, and if we want to own our devices and, and be creators, we need to understand how this stuff works. And I just think this is a very nice way of exploring that. Um, and, you know, taking things apart is a great way to learn about the inner workings and the limitations of the computing machines that we use every day. Um, thanks to these amazing sources uh, that have documented all of these glitches in way too much detail. And thanks to all of you for listening. We are. We are.